Uh, let's see. Where is the other one at? In your neighborhood. It might be. Here we go. Here's the other one. A pleasant breeze blows in through the open window that overlooks the garden. As I look into the garden, I see a female student standing in the center alone. She has a striking appearance, with long purple hair, almond skin, and a... preternatural calm. It seems like she is meditating, her hands folded in a specific way and her eyes closed. I find that I can't stop looking at her. No one else seems to notice that she stands out dramatically. I start to feel uneasy about her. The girl's eyes snap open. Suddenly, a massive jolt rocks the school, causing me to stumble about uncontrollably. The building shakes with a thunderous roar. The source seems to be the girl in the garden. The source seems to be... When the hell just happened? In the resulting confusion, my vision begins to distort. Dizziness, headaches, a sense of weightlessness. I close my eyes to keep from being overwhelmed. When I open my eyes again, everything is exactly as it should be. Like nothing happened. However, the air is permeated with a seductively sweet scent. Also, the girl that was in the garden had already disappeared. Was everything that happened just an illusion? Or maybe... As I turn to leave, I see the girl from the garden walking towards me. That blast was meant to destroy everything in its range, but the school seems stout enough. I like I can see the other question mark in the background. As she walks, she looks out the window and talks to herself. As she goes by, she gives me a smile. Ah, there she is again. I thought I'd scared away, scared her away for good, but she's come back. I'd better not make any sudden moves or she'll just run away. Also, I'll let her speak first. However, she just continues to stare at me with an intensity that borders on terrifying. Maybe I should say something to her, but softly so as not to startle her. Maybe if I keep my back to her, it'll help a little. I'll just call to her over my shoulder. I obviously can't see the look on the young girl's face, and all I sense is hesitation. Um... Her voice matches her appearance, small and faint. In a hesitant, halting voice, she begins to speak. Mister, y you're not afraid of me? Could it be that you came to see me? I if that's so, I'm Alice. I'm always here, so... She suddenly stops talking. Thinking she disappeared again, I turn around only to see Alice still standing there. As I turn, she flinches a little and begins to fade away, then stops and starts staring at me. My sushi and I saw it on the side. Nice. God, I want sushi. I haven't had some in so long. As our customary staring contest begins anew, I swear that I can see a faint smile on her face. Hey, mister, let's have tea together sometime. I think that's all she says. Let's have tea together sometime. Okay, yeah, that's all she's going to give us. Let's see, is there anything on the roof? Door to the rooftop is locked. Okay. Okay, that's all of them. Fade, you were Alice and this dude become buddies? That would be interesting. 
Uh, I'm on the third floor, right? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I have to go to the Skull Raiders, uh, Skull Library. I found it. Sukumiyahara Academy Student Registry. Once I read through this, I should be able to remember everything about myself. I open the book and begin turning pages. Immediately, I notice something's terribly wrong. The pages are blank. Blank, blank, blank. Every single page was blank. I reach for last year's school registry, and when I start flipping through the pages, blank, 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 blank. What is happening here? Who am I? And just what is this place? Also, for some reason, the Journalism Club are now gone. And there's something wrong with this place, but more, wor but more worrying is the fact I can't remember who I am. As I wander the campus, I see Leo walking down a hallway on the first floor. As a transfer student, I can't see why Leo would want to visit any of the freshmen. Also, there's nothing but a dead end up ahead. I wonder what Leo is really up to. All right, well, we're going to do something first that I have to save state for. Make sure that's saved. Check. Okay. Because, oh, no, I could save right here, but I don't want to have to go back to the title school if I don't want to. So, obviously, we're meant to follow Leo. That's basically what they're telling us to do. This is the school's main gates. The fastest way to return to the outside world. Something clearly not right about this place, and as for me... Right, I'll just leave. Once I'm out of here, I'm positive that things will return to normal. If I walk right through that gate... Right, if I can just get through that gate, I take a single step beyond the gate. In addition to an excruciating headache, a painful jolt of electricity courses through my body. I can't move. My body. My consciousness rapidly fading. In this brief moment of time, I feel as if someone is talking to me. Trying to escape this world will be seen as a forfeiture of your place in the Holy Grail War. What does that mean? I immedia immediately after thinking that, my consciousness ceases. Oh yeah, so uh, there are dead ends in this game. And that's the first one you can actually run into. I actually want to check that one out because I'd never seen it before. I suddenly have this weird feeling that someone or something's up ahead in the hallway. Who, for some reason, is examining the wall at the end of the hallway with almost excessive interest. That attention to detail is quite impressive. Even the surrounding air is surprisingly substantial. If that is the case, this world is in some ways more real than the real world it represents. But that's just my opinion. How about you guys? What are your thoughts on this place? In that moment, it feels like my heart skips a beat. Almost immediately, my blood pressure skyrockets along with my body temperature. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. My pulse is like an explosion in my ears as my blood races through my veins, and the reason is clear. Now he, I mean Leo, has turned to face me. I know for sure he's talking to me as there is nobody else present besides the two of us. Greetings. I believe this is the first time we've had an actual conversation. I don't feel any sense of hostility from Leo. In fact, his smile seems genuinely friendly. His smile has the same effect on me as the rising of the morning sun, warm and comforting. In addition to his smile, his presence is inviting and inclusive, and I find myself drawn to him. Oddly, my worries have vanished. All I can think of is doing as he says, as that's the only way to. My mind feels like it's in a haze. It's like Leo is controlling my thoughts in some way. Attending school wasn't half bad. 
I've never had the opportunity to go to one before now. In that respect, this has been quite an interesting experience. However, the time for fun has come to an end. I did not come here to play at being a student. No, that's what the sequel's for. No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed path. And for me, the time to do so has arrived. With those final words, Leo turns his back on me. Farewell. No, that's not quite right. I don't think farewell would be accurate in this situation. For reasons I cannot explain, I have the distinct feeling that we will see each other again. So I guess I should say, the more congenial, see you later. Well, it's time for me to move on. I wish you the best of luck. With those final words, Leo disappears. It's like he ceases to exist. One moment his hand is on the wall, the next he is gone. The young man in front of me seems to disappear before my very eyes. I want to say reality rejected his existence in it, but it feels like it was the opposite, that he refused to be constrained by it. It wasn't any special ability that allowed him to do so, just his strength of will. With his departure, I feel as if a great weight is lifted from my very being. And rather than be a cause for concern, it brings a fundamental question to mind. Who am I? As the question pops into my head, it begins to take on a life of its own, searing my brain. I investigate the wall that Leo disappeared through. It's just a concrete wall at the end of the hallway. About the only thing on the floor is dust. But I am positive there must be something here, because Leo walked through the wall. It would be so easy to turn around, go back down the hallway, and pretend nothing happened. But there are still things I need to know. I have no memories. That means I've never had anywhere else to go but here. No place to return to. What was it that Leo said? No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed path. That's what he said, didn't he? The beyond this wall lies the appointed path and the truth. If I follow him, I'll learn the answers to my questions, even if those answers are painful. But ignorance is bliss. Do I have the fortitude to face the truth and accept it? Yep. Something's different. Down to the floors and the walls, the skull has changed the very substance of its being. For some reason, reality cracking this way is inten intensely disturbing. This world around me is more real than a painting, but not even as real as a sandcastle. I feel like it's so brittle I could tap it, and the echo would shake this whole world. Where the boring concrete wall once stood, now there's a doorway that I can freely walk through. It's an entrance, no, an emergency exit, like stairs to the outside. It's not something of this world. I have no doubt that the world the door leads to is utterly alien. Whatever awaits inside, whatever shape it takes, there's a certain sort of finality to seeing it. Ultimately, I've already committed to this path. I bid farewell to the false world and take my first step along the appointed path. It's also weird that this is the only time we will ever see this room. Beyond the door seems to be a dismal-looking scrapyard. Out in front of me is the smooth-skinned effigy, while trying to figure out exactly what to do with it. Welcome, potential master. A voice comes out of nowhere. That effigy with you is your sword and shield for what lies ahead. It will move in response to your commands. Now then... Please proceed. The truth that you seek lies ahead. The motivation of the owner of that voice worry me. Oh wait, I know I know who that voice is. I should have done a different voice for it. Oh well. But it's obvious I won't learn anything by standing here. Also, there is no longer a path by which I can return. I have no choice but to hit, head into the darkness with only this strange doll as protection. Also weird that the effigy doesn't have footstep sounds. 
or to face the truth. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You finding out that you are a mad scientist that committed innumerable crimes against humanity? That's ridiculous. <laughs> I made it. Within the deepest depths of the world beyond the door. This place must be the goal I'm supposed to reach. At least that's what I thought. It's stifling. The aura of purity that seems to act as a ward against corrupted souls who tried to enter. The feeling is familiar. It has the feeling of a ch of a chapel where the spirits of the sea still linger. At first, I didn't notice. Hang on a second. Okay, I just want to make sure that my uh, chat was still popping up. I've had some, like, really weird things with it sometimes. At first, I didn't notice being overwhelmed by the grandeur of the room. But to one side is a young man in a familiar uniform lying still on the ground. I call out to him, but there is no reply. I shake him in an attempt to wake him up when I notice. He is stone cold. Steve Austin? I go as pale as the corpse before me, and I can no longer think coherently. All I can do is stare in bewilderment. It is at this moment. The fallen effigy lying next to the male student comes to its feet with a clatter. Before I get a chance to make sense of what's going on, it suddenly twists around and comes right at me. Oh, now it's got footsteps. Weird. Hmm. You seem to be, la be lacking as well. I didn't stand a chance against that thing. It seems I wasn't qualified to be here. Me? Qualifications? That's right. I should know everything by now. The truth has to be here. <gasps> Wasted. <laughs> Fucking just do the Dark Souls. You died. But... Now... Ah... <sighs> Everything's going dark. I'm not even really scared. The only feeling that remains in me is regret. Even at the very end, I was unable to remember anything about myself. Someone. Anyone. If you make it beyond here, please, don't forget my name. Who are you again? Alright, roll that sick theme! Oh yeah, I forgot the perfect, uh, the perfect patch also translate, like, uh, put subtitles for the, uh, for the opening song. Great song, by the way. I don't actually remember what it's called, but I'm definitely sure it's by Seesaw. I'd recognize their style of music anywhere. I actually had to remember what this song sounded like, because it's been ages since I've heard it. I only ever remember Triple C's theme. His story has ended, but what about yours? Before you write your own story, choose the vessel of your power. All right, so we have two options, and this is what I alluded to. Everyone gets a vote. The one with the most votes is the winner. A woman who wields a sword boldly or a magical fox girl? Cast your vote. One vote, Fox Girl. Mm -hmm. 
I'll send an SOS to the world. One for the sword. And if it comes down to a tie, I'll just flip a coin. I should probably go get a coin just in case. Because no one else seems to be responding. Which is unfortunate. Uh, I'm gonna grab a coin. Uh. Vote each. We're going to a coin flip. Heads is the sword. Tails is magic. I dropped it. Hang on. Right. Tails it is. Magical Fox Girl wins. Damn it, I'm rolling on my pant leg. There we go. Ugh. Whoops. Costa Maniac. A half demon shaman clad in revealing robes. This servant for players who want to be challenged by facing true adversity in battle. That's also a thing to know if you've never played this before. Uh, those choices are also will change a couple things in it, but for the but for the main thing, it's also the difficulty selection in order from easy, normal, hard. Partner with this servant. Where is the Belfry? In that moment, gentle days end. I always awaken very abrupt, abrupt, uh, abruptly. I oh, know. Don't worry. Oh, that's right. Uh, we'll quick. We'll save state here, just in case. I did say we were going to do that. Hang on. Let me just alternate speed, go through. Oh, God. Don't worry about that yet. There we go. Load complete. We'll see where this drops me off at. Normal. Word of advice. This has no relation. Okay, good. It does drop us right here. Cool. His story has ended. What about yours? All right. Partner with this servant. Yes. I'm glad you reminded me. I totally forgot. And uh, for those who aren't here to explain it, the reason we're doing this on New Game Plus is you can't fight the extra bonus boss that's in this game on a first playthrough. It has to be on a second playthrough. It's really annoying. It's the only thing I don't... Yeah, well, I take a lot of issues with this game, but that, that's a definite one I think is un unnecessarily annoying. I always awaken very abruptly. I don't even think I dream. I suddenly find myself walking to school. My headache worsens day by day until it finally buzzes in my head like an alarm. That day, in potent numbness, I wake up twice as fast as normal. Hang on a second. I walk to the schoolyard. It's clear and cloudless, 7.30 a.m., but what season is it? When I try to recall what season it is, I start to get so dizzy I almost pass out. I may wind up back in bed if I let go and faint. 
For some time, I've been embracing a rush of useless information. The normal stuff you'd see at a school, like the hustle and bustle of my classmates by the entrance. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. When I push the thought, my field of vision fizzles. Today, again, today. There's a crowd. I'm not doing that by choice, or I'm not doing a choice for that one. I've already got stuff like that pre-decided, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Today, again today. There's a crowd of students milling in front of the school gate, and more are being directed that way. As to what's going on, there's a boy in a black uniform in front of the school gate. He's my friend, as I recall. He's Issei Ryudo, as I recall. I remember this from the first time when Issei notices me looking at him. He pushes through the crowd. Good morning. Lovely weather we're having, don't you think? Why do you look so surprised? We announced at last week's assembly that this month the student council would strictly enforce school rules. He runs through his spiel as if this was the first time he'd ever disclosed the information. I already know this. I know it. I already know what happens. It's happened more than once. I'm seized by a headache. I'm so dizzy I feel like I'm being forcibly logged out of my consciousness. First, let me check your student ID. I shouldn't need to remind you, but it should be on you at all times. My login ID is being checked. It's so obvious now. I answer clearly to the question that usually makes me go dizzy. You see, the answer is obvious. Oh, that's right. It's full keyboard. Who am I? I'm just a passing through common rider who doesn't know. Ooh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Hold on. My A was being real, like, pressure sensitive. There we go. I'm just a passing through common rider. Except, you know, without the common rider part. The hell is the Z? There it is. Because even on Twitch, gotta keep this alive. I have a long lineage of characters that need to be, that need to be, <laughs> I have a long lineage of like OC characters that must be continued. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yes. Great. There's no telling when an emergency might occur, and it will be a help if you have your ID. I feel nauseous, and I know it has nothing to do with what I ate for breakfast this morning. I feel nauseous because of the world around me. It's repeating itself over and over, and it's making me sick. Now for the uniform inspection, collar check, pantyms check, and your socks check. I want him to get out of my way. I want this repetition to stop. I push him aside and go forward. I'm not nice about it either. Next is the contents of your bag. Notebooks, textbooks, pencil box. Not even a whiff of contraband. Your nails are evenly cut and your haircut is sensible. Indeed, quite remarkable. You are a model Suka Miyahara Academy student. He keeps on talking loudly even though he's facing no one. I have a headache. I'm shivering. I know one thing for sure. This is wrong. This is not the school I know. It can't be. I have to go. I have to hurry and wake up. Or else it will be too late. But who am I? Awakening for. So... Hold on, let me see if there's any more text. Okay. My anxiety and headaches are only getting worse. Afternoon arrives while I desperately try to find a way to escape this bizarre situation. As is now the norm, my vision is overlaid with some kind of unnatural distortion. Uneasiness, futility, emptiness. I want someone to explain to me the true nature behind all these feelings. There must be a key somewhere, something that will have the answers to all of my questions.
Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all of the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.